Hey, what's up? It's Triggy. Welcome to part six of the VR boxing robot build. If you'll remember, we're trying to set up a physical dummy robot to be in the exact location of a virtual entity just in the real world. That way, when you reach out to touch or punch the virtual entity, you actually feel the physical one. This is pretty much a complete redesign, so don't worry about catching up. The plan is to use two pneumatic cylinders, represented here in green, to tilt a platform left, right, forward, and backward, depending on which cylinders are extended. Notice that the third leg is just a static rod, not a cylinder. You can then mount a boxing dummy onto the platform, and voila, the dummy can move around. In order for the platform to have the correct axis of motion, we need to connect all of the legs with pin joints on the bottom, which only allow rotation along one plane, and ball joints on top, which allow for rotation in any direction. Here's a look at the cylinders that we'll be using, and here's a refresher video if you're not up to speed on cylinders. This is going to be our ball joint, which screws right onto the cylinder, and this bracket here is our pin joint, which attaches to the cylinder with the pin. We'll start out by making the platform, which will be cut from plywood. Here we're just measuring and drawing where we're going to cut. We'll cut out this shape with a jigsaw. Time to introduce our boxing dummy, Bob. In order to attach him to this frame, we need to cut a hole for his stem, so we'll measure out a 7 inch diameter hole from the center of the platform. We'll slide that onto Bob, add the second layer, and measure the space between the two, which we'll connect with PVC pipe. Let's measure out the PVC and cut it to length. Now we can drill corresponding holes into the two layers of plywood and glue them together with the PVC and wood glue, apply pressure, and set it to dry. While that sets, we can start attaching the pin joints to our base, which is just a 2 foot by 4 foot piece of plywood. Remember how one of the legs of the platform is static? We'll use PVC for that too, but it doesn't fit into the bracket. But that's fine, we can just heat it and form the end, and then it'll fit no problem. As for the ball joint on the other side, we can just drill a hole into this end cap and screw the ball joint into the cap. We just need to cut the PVC to the right size. Attaching the ball joints on the cylinders is even easier, we can just screw them right in. However, these ball joints are on a 90 degree angle, so we can't affix them directly into the top platform. So instead we'll add these blocks onto the platform, and screw the ball joints into the size of those. and the ball joint for the static leg can be screwed right into the platform. Now we can connect everything together. We see that we can achieve all of the positions we wanted, namely leaning left, right, forward, and backward. The trouble is it's pretty wiggly. 
We want there to be exactly one allowable position for each cylinder combination, and this is simply not rigid. If we take a look at the pin joints, we see this is because the joint connection isn't tight at all. Let's add some washers to each side to see if that helps. It's still pretty wiggly, so we'll have to try something else. Let's affix PVC to the ends of the cylinders. Heat it until it's pliable. Place it inside the bracket and have it cool there, so that it has exactly the right width. No! Well, that glue snapped right off. Uh, I don't think it was set right, but that's okay. We'll fix that later. It's a big improvement, but still not great. Let's replace the aluminum brackets with steel. Maybe that'll help. Again, a bit of an improvement, but still not great. Bob is going to be punched at a height of about one meter, which is creating a huge static torque or moment. The cylinder and bracket only have about a centimeter or so of overlap, meaning the force of that interaction is 100 times the force of the impact. This is a pretty big hurdle that needs to be addressed. To get a better idea of what forces are involved here, let's set Bob into the frame. But first, we'll need to fix the frame. The glue didn't quite hold, so let's go overkill here and screw the PVC into place. The plan is also to affix Bob with aluminum brackets, four on each level of the frame. For right now though, it looks like that won't be necessary. We're just getting a preliminary idea of how this will function. So Bob sits comfortably in the back position. Leaning him to the side works okay too. It's only when we lean him forward that we run into an issue. What the hell? Wait, how is that even possible? Even just the weight of Bob himself is putting too much stress on this ball joint. If you see in that, I mean, it's got a thin little neck and that thing is just bending if, you know, I weren't to be supporting Bob right now with my foot. The moments being imparted onto these parts is just too substantial. Well, that's why we make prototypes. I think I see a solution here, but first let's check Bob's mobility. I'll play the role of the pistons to demonstrate that the range of motion of this rig checks all the boxes for a basic boxing interaction, and we see that our design successfully emulates the movements and position that we want Bob to be able to do. Back to the torque issue. It's a common practice to relieve bending stress using trusses, which convert bending to tension and compression, which is way better. Like, it's easy to bend a spoon, but try pulling it apart. I was hesitant to add trusses at first, since the legs of the rig need to be mobile, but the movement of the static leg is so slight that we can basically treat it as stationary and add a truss. This pretty much completely relieves the bending stress on that ball joint, and now we can impart some considerable force pressing down and forward on the rig. The flexibility of the PVC is allowing it to wiggle still, but it's no longer a structural issue. Before we call it a day, I just want to test out the pistons. So I'm going to go ahead and set my compressor to 30 PSI, and fire these off to get the different positions that we want Bob to be able to have. That went surprisingly well, so I'm pretty happy to call that there. Anyway, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe, and I'll be back soon with the next iteration.